All right. Well, let's get today's show started with old Akram Wadley, mm. senior out of Iowa, standing 5'11", two hundo. I'll toast to that. It's one of Jay Wayne's uh, personal faves. <laughs> I, I also enjoy some Wadley, but probably not quite as much as Jay Wayne does. Um, so what's what's your uh, what's your favorite parts my, of old Akram's game here? My assess. Yeah. My assessment. Well, let's get the cons out of the way real quick. There's like just basically two cons, right? He's a little bit small. He's in the two hundo ish, smaller frame. Think of theoretic kind of guy. Um, Stop it. <laughs> well, that's just your go to. That's people's go to when you think of a smaller frame small dude. Small guy who can catch balls. Yeah, or Jamal Charles. You're either really good or you're theoretic. Like that's the only thing you can be as a small bag. Anyway, that's one kind of con you can have against him. Um, even though I think that he's got the workload to show that he can handle the rock if if need be. Um, and then the long speed is like not top notch, but he busts off plenty of big runs. I think it's pretty good, but it's not just it's not it's not Ronald Jones good. Um, that that at the long speed anyway. I guess I could give you that, but but I, think I the do long think speed's better than some people think it is. And I think the athletic ability is very solid. Like he jumps off the page to me in in a way that kind of Ronald Jones does. Um, he's he's very very shifty. He can operate in a tight box, as you like to say. Um, I love the quickness. I love his ability to shed tacklers, spin moves, stiff arm, are dirty. He yeah. can make you miss altogether if he wants to. That spin move and jump cut are so lethal. It's like my favorite thing in his arsenal. That spin move is ridiculous. Yeah. He's he's aggressive. Aggressive expansion. He's he's almost mean at times. He takes what's there in a hurry. Um, he makes quick quick decisions he's very decisive it's got a, a good quick twitch kind of reaction to him right exactly um he he showed me also though some tough some tough running he would grind out one to two to three yards usually right. falling forward has that kind of chip on his shoulder um but then he he sets up his blocks well and he'll give you a hesitation move he was beating guys with just a little head well, fake yeah. and not even wasting any movement in the nice lower head, body got a nice head fake Go, going back to um, the doesn't shy away from contact kind of thing. Like <clears throat> last week we talked about Penny and um, Royce, Royce Freeman, Freeman, who are both above 220 pounds, mm -hmm. six, six foot plus guys. Yeah. And don't should be bangers. Don't consistently run like bangers, especially Penny. I don't think, um, I think Royce had some, like we talked about, had some, had some times where he did it. Um, but these 200 pound guys who are a little slighter framed um, seem in this class seem to be the roles are a little bit reversed. Like right. You got these 200 pound guys, the Wadleys and the Justin Jacksons who we'll get to. And we talked about Rojo uh, last week who all kind of run with a little bit of tenacity and, and toughness about them. They don't shy away from the contact. Like if you come at Akram Wadley, like you're just about to throw this little man down to the ground. Like mm -hmm. you better come correct. He's going to make you look stupid. If, if you just try to give him a, a soft arm tackle and, mm -hmm. and obviously sometimes he does get tripped up and, and taken down with, so you, you can't don't at me with some soft tackle from Akram Wadley. Like I understand <laughs> everybody gets brought down lightly sometimes at IMC Myers, but I mean, for the most part, this guy with a 200 pound frame that everyone's going to point to that, you know, isn't a big back. These all these most of these 200 pound guys kind of have a little bit of power. Don't shy away from contact thing to their game. And maybe that's by design because they know they're a little bit smaller and they know they got to put, you know, the fact that, hey, I, I can I can still bang with, yeah. with these collegiate level athletes. Right. And and I think if you put Akron Wadley's running style with Kalen Balaj's body and athletic profile, you'd have a ridiculous back. Maybe, maybe not running style, but maybe mindset, mindset to running. Yeah, like the running. You know, obviously he's right. A, I like a that. lot smaller and and uh, a lot slimmer and a, and a few inches smaller. But if you put his mindset in Kalen Balaj's body, I think there would right. be a whole different. Uh, we, yeah, a whole different. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There'd be a whole different narrative in my mind around mm -hmm. Kalen Balaj. Right. Um, and, and we'll get to Kalen Balaj a little later for your pleasure. Um, but I, I mean, I just, I really enjoyed watching this guy on film from pretty much day one. Um, I love his ability to string moves together. It's only a matter of time before he rips off big chunks of yardage. Um, and he's grinding it out for me in between the tackles and getting the tough yardage as well. And he can catch. Oh, and he can catch. He's which a is, catcher. Which is what I think, you know, 
the next level is going to look at him to do, in my opinion. Um, the catching is going to come into a uh, huge play for him at the next level. He is an okay pass protection. Um, you don't... I, I didn't see a ton of examples um, when when watching all the film. He typically is going out um, yeah. to catch balls. He'll he'll cut a guy, you know, when when asked to. But Shot I saw blocking. him get I saw him get run through a couple of times. Um, but again, he moves out of the backfield a lot. And <clears throat> as we've been talking about, I feel like pass protection as a college back is is a rare thing to be like, oh my god, he's such a good pass protector. Yeah, and and effort's definitely not going to be an issue with this guy. Um, he's, he had 71 catches in his career, th- over 30 each of the past two years, which is really when he's getting most of his work and right. production. Um, he's got pretty sure hands. I like the crisp routes out of the backfield. He spent some time in practice at slot wide receiver. So I, I just I like all this stuff about him. The start and stop are tremendous. Yeah. Um, and then on top of all that stuff, um, all the guys we're going to talk about today are pretty good interviewers. They pretty much – show you what you want to see and and you know they're getting coached up to to tell you what you want to hear but I still do want to hear what I want to hear if that makes sense um but this guy just seemed to be the most level-headed the most down-to-earth real kind of character um he seemed to be like being himself you could see how to he had developed a relationship with the people in the press room mm-hmm. he knew their names he told them he was all gonna miss them when he was gone um, at his last press conference after the Boston College game in the Music City Bowl that they won. Um, he had like inside jokes with him and stuff. Like he just, you see him developing character. Like y- you can see his character kind of come through with that. And people yeah. like, like him. It's hard not to like this dude. Um, he seemed like he had a bit of a sense of humor. He seemed like he was a humble dude. He's got, he talked about his family. He's got a big family and a lot of support behind him. Um, the, one of the reporters brought up, said, said this to him. He's like, I don't know if you knew this, but you finished one touchdown short of the school record. And he kind of smiled, dropped his head like he knew that was the case. Yeah. He didn't get the record. And the reporter was like, you know, you were on the one-yard line, but the coach didn't give you the ball. And he was like, yeah. And he was like, and the coach said he would have given you the ball had he known you could get the record. And he was like, yeah. And he was like, you could have told him. And and he was like, nah. He's like, we got the touchdown. That's really all I care about. Right. And like, he just let the record go. There's no way he's going to be like, hey, coach, let me get this yeah. record. You know, that's just not who he is. Um, and so he, you know, he was also talking about how they had worked on some specific things in practice and how that translated to the field and it became second nature and how he respected the process and he wants to put in that work in progress. And, you know, again, like I know these guys are coached to tell us what we want to hear, but I was just very impressed coming away from it. Um, on top of loving him as a runner and really like, and his catching ability. And like, if you look at the game log, I know he's not the bigger dude, and he's probably not profiled to become a, a, an every down back in the NFL, but he was a workhorse for this team. There was plenty of games where he was over 20 carries right. a game and a bunch of catches. So I, I don't, I'm not saying that he's going to be a feature back, but I think he could become one. Like yeah. I think he has all the tools, and, and maybe, he's, maybe he's never going to be something better than a really strong RB2, but I think that's – a solid RB2 is the floor here, and I, sure. I'm all about safeness and comfortability and liking a dude's work ethic, and I just – he's he's shown me everything. These are just kind of why – and on top of that, I just really like him. Something down inside me just has liked him the whole right. time, down in my, my down, plums, down in you plums. know. Why to take these plums to farmer's market. And take them to market. Two for one plums. Two for one plums. <laughs> <laughs> Buy one plum, get two free. So- <laughs> Well, I, I don't I don't disagree with with anything that you just said. I, I I looked into a lot of that stuff. I I I like you do like Akram Wadley a good bit. You probably like him a little bit more than me. You probably have a little bit more confidence in him being a feature back. I don't necessarily believe that he possesses that trait. Potentially, but, he could be, but I think you know what you're going to get is is a little bit of a satellite third down and and can mix in. Um, on first and second here and there and and get his team some tough yards like we just mentioned like he's he's not a he doesn't run like uh i don't (laughs) (laughs) he doesn't run like uh, you know he's made of glass like he like he's only 200 pounds he runs he runs strong and i think you know that'll about to say something worse than glass there (laughs) that'll that'll bode well for him at the next level um obviously iowa is not the most potent unit in college football but Wadley is always and consistently the biggest part of any sort of the offense that they had oh yeah um you put him in a one-on-one situation in any type of space he's 
nine times out of ten, nine point nine times out of ten, going to make the guy look very foolish in space. Um, How many attempts did he have this year? Two hundred and fifty. So the biggest thing from <clears throat> from maybe junior year to senior year was that he went from uh, one hundred and sixty eight carries and a thousand yards. Average in 6.6. You saw a drop off in the average coming into his senior year, but he also had 252 attempts, which was good for like 16th in the nation. Um, and he only, he still only had 1,100 yards, which was only 100 yards more than what he had last year. But you still saw him be able to be productive with a higher volume of work, which, you know, in, in my yeah. mind, isn't a bad thing, especially out of a guy who's with the smaller frame and, and to the next level, I think you know, that's probably a good thing to see that he can handle right. a little bit of a workload. Not that he will. I don't think he's going to yeah. handle a huge l workload at the next level. But, you know, I could definitely see him falling into a, a nice third down role. And I also believe that this guy can be a, a, a good kick returner, punt returner right off the rip and, and give you those opportunities to, to show what he can do on the field, in the open field and be able to finish runs and all that kind of stuff. And and. If he does that kind of stuff well, I think I feel like that can, you know, lead to better opportunities on the field if he isn't, you know, carved himself out a role right away as a third down guy. If you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, they definitely they they his senior year they played with him at, at kick returner a little bit. He had nine for for two hundred seventy one yards. It was a thirty yard average on a return. Um, and and you talked about you know playing in Iowa. It's it's a solid solid uh competition that he's playing against right. over there so penn big state 10, good defenses michigan state uh, ohio state wisconsin this year in that um, uh penn state game he was a big part of of you know keeping that game to yep. even close to where it was and, and then and if you take it back to uh, 2016 they played michigan in week uh 10 michigan was nine and zero in that game coming into there and akram gave them their first l uh, 23 attempts for 115 yards. Right added, on his shoulders, yep. Added 52 receiving yards on five catches and another touchdown. Like, just carried that team. Comes up big for his team in the big spots when they need him. Clutch team. Clutch. Clutch team. And, and, you know, Iowa traditionally runs that zone blocking scheme, and he has all the traits that fit right into that zone blocking scheme. We're going to talk about Justin Jackson a little later and how he kind of fits into – the patience and, yep. and the decisiveness to make those cuts and that kind of shifty guy and, and letting and, the lanes open up for right. themselves and using the blocks well Akram and fits right into there but absolutely. it's not saying that he's just limited to going to a team that runs zone blocking schemes so he can catch passes from anywhere right um, and he can create and, on his own from right, anywhere exactly yeah i'm i'm good Let me, give me some Akram wadley i'm probably gonna have him ranked way too high i don't know i'm that's that's fine though. That's what you got to do. You got to you got to get. Yeah. In, in my opinion, you got to get the guys that you want and that you believe in, especially in a rookie draft. That's kind of what it's all about. Eventually, you know, you got to probably start looking at the value and where the market and where people the 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 big guys end up ranking these guys, and it kind of spills over into the mainstream of drafters. And then eventually, you got to start grabbing the value. In my yeah. opinion, but. You also have to have, you know, a strong conviction of these are the guys that I want and I want to put on my team. Right. So, yeah, you got to you got to have no regrets. You know what I'm saying? No <laughs> not regrets. Even, not even like one letter. <laughs> yeah. Was that uh, meet the meet the Millers? We yeah, are the Millers. Are the, yeah. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right. Well, let's let's get on to uh, the next guy who's a who's a little bit different of a player, a little bit different of a frame. We're going to get into Josh Adams after the break. Let's get into a little bit of a, a heavier guy here. Yeah. We, we talked about a, a slight, slightly framed guy and then let's get into a, to a, a big hev here. <laughs> he's not quite a hev. No, he's not a hev. Josh Adams at 6'2", 225 at a central bucks high school in Pennsylvania. <laughs> you know, you love those Pennsylvania those guys. Pennsylvania guys. <laughs> every time. Um, so we talked about how the, uh, the big guys in this draft run like uh, they may or may not be made of glass. Yeah. This guy. A kind way to put it. Kind of complete opposite. Yeah. I think he runs with the purpose here. Uh, he's Absolutely. He's 6'2", 225, depending on, you know, who you look at. Yeah, yeah. I also read he was 6'1", 212, and then the very next line was this 6'2", 225 guy, and I was like, well, somewhere in between there, maybe yeah. the median. So, I mean, he looks he looks big. He does kind of have the skinny, a little bit of a skinny leg action, it seems. Um, but he runs hard. He ended up 14th in uh, rushing yards with 14 with uh, 1430. 
uh, 12th in yards per attempt at 6.9. At one point, he was averaging like 9.9 yards a carry or something crazy halfway through the season. <laughs> crazy. Um, so Notre Dame had a bad season last year for the first time in, in a while, I think, or pretty bad season. Everyone was calling for, uh, what's his name over there? Brian Kelly's head. Oh, yeah. Um, so they brought in uh, this guy from Memphis who was, I believe, maybe their offensive coordinator or something, Chip Long. Um, so he's an RPO guy. So they added some of that to their offense, but they really stuck to their guns with a lot of Chip or uh, no, yeah, Chip Kelly. Brian <laughs> Kelly's a, a big smash mouth, a lot of, you know, big offensive linemen run downhill, all that kind of stuff. They stuck to their guns. They, they maybe switched up the pace a little bit on some of these big plays and, and would get to the line and, and run a, a play a lot faster. And, and there was still a, you know, a fair amount of RPOs in this offense, but they, they, they ran smash mouth, punch you in the face offense with two awesome offensive linemen who could potentially be first rounders in, I'm probably going to pronounce these. Do you know how to pronounce these guys' mm, names? Go for so, it. So Quentin Nelson <laughs> and Mike McGlinchy. McGlinchy? Yeah. I, I'm not sure. McGlinchy. So th those two guys are, are absolute studs. So this is a good line. And then they have an assortment of solid blocking tight ends. And then they had a, a quarterback in Wimbush who is well equipped to kind of run this system where they're running a lot, a lot of unbalanced lines, a lot of, you know, they, they basically run kind of a based out of a gap scheme running style offense. Um, and Josh Adams, you know, really excelled at parts this year and just – the crazy thing is, like, I don't even think you saw the best Josh Adams. He was super banged up most of the season. Yeah. I don't even know where to start with all that. That was, that was Josh Adams in a nutshell there. Uh, he, he definitely dealt with a lot of injuries this year, um, which makes what he did even more impressive because um, he definitely – he's got that uh, – that one cut run downhill kind of style that yeah. plays into very well, like what, what you're saying that team wanted to do. Um, and I love the physicality that he runs with and the stiff arms and balance doesn't seem to be a concern. He's definitely converting any kind of third and fourth and short situation. Yeah. You saw a couple of times where he didn't pick up the third and short and they gave it to him again on fourth. Right. And he picks it up by a couple of yards. Yep. And, but then also on a fair amount of runs, he's kind of got you on the edge of your seat. Cause it feels like he he's about to break one. And if he yeah. gets going, and I don't, can't really catch him. I don't think, again, I don't think you saw the full uh, gambit of what his long speed can be. Right. When, you, when you look back at the Heisman or the uh, his freshman kind of tape, you, there's the long speed looks a little bit better. You can't not only the long speed, but the short area quickness and agility is, right. looks even better. I mean, like freshman uh, Josh Adams, that that highlight tape might look better than any of these dudes we're talking about today. Like, yeah looks looks great um <clears throat> just let you know like give double you throat the, clears give you the energy <laughs> energy injury stuff that he dealt with this year he battled an ankle injury early on in the season missed the second half of the michigan state game which is week four with uh ankle stiffness next week against my miami of ohio he tweaked his knee in the first quarter didn't play any more of that game but he still had uh 159 yards two touchdowns on eight carries um he suffered from some seasonal allergies and dehydration. Uh, we Can somebody get this man some Allegra? And some water. And, uh, some, and some water, please. Yeah, week six versus North Carolina, and then and then he suffered a concussion the following week versus Wake Forest, or maybe that was two weeks later. Um, he returned the following week versus Miami, but then left in the third quarter due to an undisclosed injury, which I think was just a, more of the concussion symptoms. He said he wasn't getting good sleep and was had a lot of tests and was having trouble concentrating and like getting headaches, and then it got into the football game, was playing real football, and then that led to some more headaches. So, I mean, he de that's that was weeks four through eight or something, where it was just one thing on top of another, and, you know, yeah. him to still put up those numbers – that I mean, coming into saw. November, he was a Heisman dark horse, kind of. He was just absolutely right. crushing again, right. averaging a stupid number of uh, yards per attempt. Right. So there was a time when I was looking at, you know, it was like 17 tape, and I was thinking he was getting a little bogged down and didn't have that kind of quickness or anything. Not that he needs it. He's 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 not. He's a no-nonsense runner. He doesn't dance. It's a very deliberate. He's deliberate with what he wants to do. Right. Um, and he can pop him off. Um, but I think the footwork is is pretty solid i don't you know it's not a lot of wasted movement yeah um, i think i don't think he his lateral quickness and change of direction he has to throttle down a little bit it looks like but again like you said I, i'm in the camp of i'm a, kind of okay with that because he is a no-nonsense runner he stays north and south 
He's kind of smash you in the mouth and stop me if you can. Now, obviously, he had a really good offensive line, so that you can sick offensive you can line. knock him for that. But we, you know, we gave Carry on Johnson some love last week, and there was parts of the year where they Auburn was considered a top five offensive line. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, and he still have to go out there, and he just crushed yards with that awesome right. offensive line. Um, and, is, and and there was a, there, I mean, when you're watching the tape, you see some awesome blocks being thrown around him. But Pro Football Focus still charted him with averaging 5.89 yards after mother effing contact. Like, that's an impressive stat. After contact, you're getting almost six yards. Right. That's crazy. I can't find stats like that on most guys. Yeah, I don't know. Where, I reason. wish I could get them on the other guys, but sometimes they give you these randomnesses if you find them. And that's, that's fantastic. And just, you know, as, as we've been talking about, you know, last week we talked about Penny and um, – Royce Freeman, who are kind of bigger backs and and don't necessarily won't always bang it. Won't, won't, aren't really bangers. And then when you watch this guy, the, the reason that I'm that I'm really intrigued and into this guy is because yeah, there is times where there's good holes blocked and he knows how to get through those and he'll bust it off for you. But there's times where he's just banging it up the field and it just he looks like his style will immediately transfer to an NFL playing field. You know, a lot smoother, smoothly, smooth smoother more smooth more smoothly (laughs) um than a lot of these other guys and uh i'm 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 kind of into it he might not have the lateral quickness as some of these other guys but i I think the the might not need it as much smash mouth and couple that with i do think he has pretty decent long speed and maybe you didn't even quite see that this is a guy his junior year in high school who had a devastating knee injury yeah and And maybe so maybe that's starting to become like a Basically, trend here. Maybe that's a uh, knock that we gotta kind of consider. Is that there a lot of scholarships dropped off, or Notre Dame didn't drop off, and, right. and he went there. And then his freshman year, we were just talking about how good he looked, and you know, got a little banged up through this year. But he he mostly played through, plays through just it. about all that, and he played well through just about all that, and probably not even at the at the peak potential that you could have seen him. Right. Um. So some room for growth. I'm, even I'm pretty into uh into what's going on they again they do run some run pass option kind of stuff and the times where the quarterback did take off he's always downfield blocking yep he's always got a solid block he's not um, the best downfield blocker but he's pretty decent around the line of yeah, scrimmage which is what's most important definitely not bad you you did see in 16 there's a lot more catches on film hands are mediocre um yeah. they're not great but they're not absolutely terrible this year for whatever reason you didn't see a ton of catches most of them coming in one game Week two versus georgia yeah like had six, six had 13 thir- yep. on the on the season um jinx so, stat re- regurgitation so not not the greatest of uh 41 total catching, catches though it's not the worst number he i I don't think that this is gonna like he's not he's not being a guy that you're gonna bring into your team thinking like oh we're gonna we're gonna throw it check it down to Josh yeah, Adams a yeah. lot. I'd like to or, see him run the gauntlet at the combine. Yeah, which we can't know anything until we get to the combine. Obviously. <laughs> um. So that that's kind of where I stand on Josh uh, Adams. I, ha- I seems think, like a solid swing at a at a, at a complete back. I, like a I big think back. So, I think so too. He was he's one of the, again one of these bigger guys that is actually banging out there mm-hmm. and will will carry guys and run through arm tackles and break put it, away and pop put his off. head down when there isn't anything to really be gained and and get you three get you four and sometimes he pops those off like he's just he looks the part and that's i mean that's yeah. not always exactly what you're looking for but that's one of the things in my mind when i'm looking at running backs like does he look like when you go to the nfl he looks like an nfl running back playing in college and some mm-hmm. of these guys just look like really good college athletes playing in college right if it's that makes sense great point yeah no i'm with you i'm with you i'll take yeah. some I'll take some Josh Adams. Yeah, I mean, we'll see where we got him ranked at the end of this show, or, or maybe we we disagree a little bit, but that, that's the uh, that's the fun of this whole process. Let's uh, let's continue with this rookie talk. We got Justin Jackson on the deck. What uh, I think we both really like this guy. What do you got over there, Case? I think if you got to throw one word out for Justin Jackson, it's consistency. You got four years of collegiate production at thousand yards plus, um, fifteen hundred yards last season. 1,400 yards sophomore season, 1,100 yards freshman season, and then 1,300 yards this uh, past season as a senior, 11 touchdowns this year, averaging 4.6 a carry. Um, and that's not even like the part that gets people in the NFL excited. I think it's the catches. I think the uh, 122 of them. I think the 122 catches throughout the career and, and kind of what he did with them is is what everyone's going to be excited about at the next level. Um, and you you are getting a guy who is 
uh, in the 200 pound range, like we've been talking about where we we went with Wadley, who was 200. Then we kind of talked about a bigger guy in, in Josh Adams. Um, and now we're back to a smaller guy, but this guy kind of runs with a little bit of power in his game, just like Wadley. I think he might even run with like he, he, he profiles to me when you watch him as a, as a little bit more of a, of a power running back when, when you kind of see his, his game and, 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 uh, and and where it kind of lies, he's not. He doesn't have like crazy long speed or anything, but he's got great quickness. Um, well, that was the word when he said if you could sum up him in one word, I was going to go like quick, shifty. Uh, you went with consistent. That's I went with another consistent great one. just because of solid. You know, yeah, that's a, that's a, he's he's Northwestern's you know all time leading rusher, and you got to be consistent. I think to be the all time leading rusher or absolutely just crush it for two seasons or something crazy. Yeah, and to me the vision I think is is pretty pretty awesome. Um, I had in my notes that that he he lets his blockers get in place. They run a zone blocking scheme there at, at Northwestern, and you know linemen are pulling and and shifting and running all over the place, <clears throat> and and like he does a great job of letting the play develop. That's kind of like what I wrote from from watching him play. Um, and then I watched him him and Howard Griffith on the film room or whatever uh-huh. they were in the uh, the Northwestern film room, and he was sitting down with them. They were breaking down this outside zone read play. And he was like breaking down every single little detail about how you know he, his eyes are immediately at the at the end man on the line of scrimmage, and then depending on how wide that guy is, he's stretching the play out, and then his eyes shift to the safety, and he immediately sees that if the safety doesn't take this the best angle possible right now, he's not going to catch me. And by that time, he's on the back feet of his outside blocker, which means right. that for him to cut up, and the safety can't react quick enough, and he's basically diagnosing these plays like before it happens, and so he's almost reacting anticipatory like it's it's anticipation yeah. instead of reaction and it's it's that le- like that's got to be what good vision is right is being able to read that and let it develop and then have the quickness to to burst up field yeah and well, get I mean, those big yards in, in that zone scheme like you're talking about you're kind of ba- you in like a normal s- scheme you, you're reading from inside out on the zone scheme you're reading from outside in so kind of right. what you were talking about there kind of seeing what's outside and then you kind of read it all the way and then if nothing's going on you kind of just Wait until you see a, a little backside crease and then and then hit it and he kind of fits perfectly into this scheme that they were running over there as as well as we talked about Wadley kind of fitting into that zone scheme kind of for the same reasons yeah um, but I think and we talked about the power in Wadley's game I think Justin Jackson has has decent power to his game even though he's only two hundred he seems to excel in the inside zone runs sure in this system that that uh, Northwestern's putting out there I I really loved what I saw through there he seems to kind of like get skinny through those holes. And then for a smaller guy, like he doesn't ever really seem to take the big shot out of all these games that I watch. You never see him really get crushed. And that's something in an interview that I watched him talk about how he kind of takes calculated risks about, right. you know, oh, well, I'm trying to make it through the whole season. I don't, you know. Right. I got to pick my spots when I'm going to put my shoulder down and right. I'm going to cut my losses and, and not take big hits. But at the same time, he's, He's got great lean. His his pad level's good. He's low. Sure. He gets you an extra yard or two. He falls forward. But when, when you don't take the hit, that's very, very attractive. To like, have your guy all season. Right. Coming um, in. and 1,142 attempts over his career, right. which is a sick number. Every, so almost every, a scary number. But, you know, I guess we're not really profiling to be the big yeah. workhorse back in the NFL. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think you're going to see huge carry per game numbers yeah. from a guy like Justin Jackson. He's going to be a little bit more of a satellite guy, I think. But I liked him through the tackles. I liked him running oh, the me inside. Too, can That's make what guys, we just spent the last couple of right. minutes talking about. Make guy, he makes guys miss in tight space and in open space. Um, you know, Quickness and acceleration and decision-making are all very, very good. Uh, top, rock solid. Yeah, well, he, he, he has, like you said, he's got really quick, decisive cuts and moves. Um he will absolutely slap someone in some pass blocking situations. I oh, saw yeah. also n- not only in just straight up pass blocking, but when he's kind of coming off that edge and they want him to chip on somebody, I saw him four or five times just lay the dude who was already engaged and he was supposed to chip on just completely out. Um, I he, saw him block two different blitzers on one play. He will miss on occasion, but again, as we're talking about all these college guys it's not i don't think it's a it's a huge uh something that they really put a lot of emphasis on during the game is something that you kind of learn as as you go on and get to the next level um but i don't think i think he's kind of in the upper echelon of that he's very willing to just put his body on you and 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 give all the effort that he could possibly 
give you out of that 200 pound frame absolutely he's a super tough dude and he's pretty efficient in short yard of situations yeah. despite that size um and he's he's a grinder he's out there for his team doing whatever he needs to do like uh, this michigan state game you know he was he was running into some brick walls and there wasn't a lot of room for him he only had 41 yards and 17 carries but he added seven catches for 51 yards he threw a touchdown in the Chucked fourth one. quarter to give them the lead michigan state ended up tying it up sending it to overtime he scores a rushing touchdown to tie the game up in double overtime. And then in the third overtime, he makes a solid block on a blitzing linebacker, gives his quarterback just time. enough time to hit the sure. guy on the crossing route, and they win the game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I just I love that grittiness to, uh, you know, and he had given up a sack earlier in that game. But then when it counted and the game was on the line, he sure. made the block for the win. And it wasn't a great block. It was just solid enough to give the guy enough time to hit his guy. Yeah. And I, 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 I do think that, uh, you know, Akram Wadley has a little bit of a quicker twitch to his sure. game um, that, that kind of jumps off the page. But, I, I mean, this guy's quick enough, and I think he's got some balance. He's able to hold his line amidst arm tackles, and he doesn't really get tripped up from behind. Yeah, no, I mean, he's got he's got plenty of quickness. We've been killing the inside kind of zone run game, but when they do kind of move to the outside zone and, and plays around the edge, he's got enough – quickness and speed to get that corner um i think he does lack some long speed he does consistently get caught from behind when on on longer runs yeah uh, as, at least as far as i get caught but not tripped up right he'll get he'll get caught just because i think he's out of steam right um but the he quick, doesn't have the, the long quickness speed. To, to get through the the first and second level are really good um and i feel like this guy is is constantly moving and shaking and kind of shimmying uh, a lot of quick cuts and moves but not but but very decisive with where he's going which all leads to great things i think he's pretty patient he'll kind of hop and skip around and wait um kind of like you were talking but this is what kind of has to take place in the zone blocking scheme right um and then he'll you know kind of make his move through his progressions and figure out which lane to hit he's he's really good at pressing up to the line of scrimmage kind of real tight um waiting until he's either sucked the defender in or the lineman's engaged on his block and then he'll explode with a little jump step around the lineman uh when he sees his little hole or lane so i think there's a lot of good positives with justin jackson i think he's probably going to slide down a lot of boards mm -hmm. and i think he's going to be a really solid draft pick a little later in drafts and come right in and have potential to be just as good as rb2 is just about anybody because we talked about the pass uh protection which he's more than willing to do we talked about how his hands and the amount of receptions that he has now i don't love his hands they're not like outstanding by any means i don't think i saw him drop a couple of balls and, and juggle some stuff and i don't think he's the most uh efficient and best route runner but as you mentioned um i think he does have a good kind of wit about him about when to kind of well yeah so maybe the routing route running isn't the best but that kind of comes into play. What I, this, The point that I was trying to make, I think that was off air, where we were talking about his pass protection, and he knows when his pass protection duties are over, and now he needs to release off the line of scrimmage to give his quarterback like an out and, and be a safety valve right. for him. And you saw him do that a bunch. You saw him pick up one or two catches extra a game just because he knows he's not, he has nobody to block. Let me turn around right. and escape this area and be an outlet. And those, those are like extra points you're about to get. Yeah, he can it, turn that into something bigger. And that kind of goes back to what you were talking about before. He's a pretty intuitive player. Like mm -hmm. when you were talking about how he was going through his progressions and his reads on the run there. Like, yeah, exactly. Like he, that, that, if that's a word that spills right over into those kind of plays. While I don't love the way he runs his routes, he consistently does win in a route they're just not the the best looking routes and they're they're mostly kind of those little break off kind of deals so i think there's a, a lot to like about uh justin jackson here yeah, i mean basically justin jackson i like you <laughs> i like you <laughs> a little borat <laughs> that was a pretty funny movie but uh yeah there's there's uh there's not much to hate about this guy it's just the model of consistency he's got hands which is if you're not going to be at the upper echelon of things that's what you got to be able to do and you can pass protect so yeah i'm kind of interested in what he has and i think he's going to slip down boards enough to be you know especially in in fan in the fantasy world i don't know where mm -hmm. he'll fall in the actual draft or anything like that but he'll he'll i think he'll be a really good value for you i mean imagine this dude on like the patriots team or something where they right. could where they could scheme him any which way they want and and the, th the threat of the run is definitely there and he can get it done smart out of the guy. air and, and is smart and anticipates well and makes good decisions. Like, you know, I don't know. Obviously, it'd be pretty muddy there, and they're always got a slew of backs. But Well, they're going to probably lose Deion Lewis, mm -hmm. and who knows what's going to happen with Gillisley. And Rex Burkhead's only on a one-year deal. So. Yep. 
James White's the only one shared up long term there. Yeah. So anyway, didn't want to just give him some Patriot love there. <laughs> Uh, but that, I think that'll do it. Yeah, I mean, we're both we're both like Justin we're Jackson. Like I can Justin see Jackson him ended up on our teams because sure. I think he's gonna fall. I think people are gonna he's gonna fall down the board, and I'll be looking to scoop him up when Me I can. Me too. I'm I'm all in on some some solid PPR potential, baby. Give me it. Let's do it. All right, we'll be back with some uh, with some Kalen Balage for your pleasure. <laughs> all right, welcome back. Hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty if you feel so inclined. Let's get into this uh, Bellage et toi, shall we? The whole Bellage et toi. <laughs> Sorry, just cracked myself up. Kevin Bellage et toi. <laughs> Yo, so the hype is like so live on this dude right now, right? Out of control from, from the senior bowl and if, the, the workouts pre senior bowl and everything that he was doing, everything is. Really, he's probably the most polarizing player right now to date. Of just you know, I feel like there's a. It's basically you either love this guy or you hate this guy, and you're willing to go to uh, extreme go measures. to extreme measures in either direction to uh, defend your well, stance. And it, I, I think I'm kind of I'm pretty conflicted with this guy, and I, yeah. I think you are too. You might be a little bit more on the negative side than the positive side on this guy. <clears throat> I do have a decent cons list for this guy bigger than any of the other guys cons list uh that i have um but i mean if this dude could play texas tech every week i'd be all in on the hype train yeah dude busted off a record tying eight touchdowns versus boys he had 14 <laughs> on the year but uh but it's written right here in the married to the game pleasure chest rule book that any tape versus texas tech has to be thrown out or right very very heavily discounted doesn't count yeah when you play north texas <laughs> Texas Tech, Eight UMass, oh just ridiculous. That is crazy. Oh man! So like, I mean, I don't know, man. I I want to like this cat. I really do want to like him, and maybe I, I should like him more. But I'm definitely not as giddy as most people. Like, if you read through the Roto World articles about him, like you can't go once one blurb without hearing about his. 21.6 miles per hour and how he's a freak Which, athlete. And that, like, that's not what they came up with at the, at the, uh, the senior, senior bowl. bowl. He was 19 <clears> some, <throat> mm -hmm. couple miles per hour behind Leonard Fournette. And Wadley yeah. was only a few tenths off of what yeah. uh, yeah. Balazs was putting out there. How about that? So maybe a little misconstrued on that information, but you know who knows what's what's right and wrong at this point. Wadley also is only two hundred pounds. Belage right. is six three, exactly. two hundred twenty two right. pounds. And Leonard Fournette was at twenty two miles per hour. Mm, but he's no good, right? Can't. But be anyway, good. it's one dimensional. This guy highlight tape, <laughs> Kalen Belage is absolutely ridiculous. But then, kind of when you get to the game tape, it tells a slightly different story. Um, there's just Sometimes, again, I would say we've been harping on this for two weeks now. Just a lot of these bigger guys, they don't run like the bigger guys that they are. Yeah. And I think that's my biggest problem with what, what Balazs is putting on tape is that there's sometimes where you do see him run kind of physical. And, you know, it's out of that Wildcat or Sparky or whatever the <laughs> Arizona State wants to call that mm -hmm. formation. And then, you know, you see games and spots of games where – he is being pretty decisive and putting his head down and, and smashing the way I think that a back of that size and stature should be smashing. Um, and then other times it's it's completely like he's just a role of Charmin. Right. Yeah, I mean, he that, the, the UCLA game comes to mind where there was really some good flashes there. You see him plant his foot, make a, a nice accelerated cut up field. There's also a couple of runs where you see him get that pad level low and he uses that big body to drive piles, but he's just, he's not consistent with that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's an effort thing or if it's like the way they're using him or maybe he's banged up and we don't know about it, but it just seems like there's times where he just takes, he's all, he's not out there. He's not, yeah. he's not, he doesn't look quick. The, the feet look slow at times. And then sometimes you see him look pretty good. And so like, I'm, I'm, I'm torn because, like, I don't know. I mean, I know there's a bunch of these video cutups of him doing these feet drills, and and that's fine. But like, it's, it's gotta, you gotta see it unfold on the football field consistently. And, and maybe I'm missing something. I could be completely wrong about this guy, but it seems like the change of direction sometimes looks a little slow. Like, and I won't really know anything 
until I see his three cone drill. Right. Um, <laughs> which I do love a, a, a three cone drill, and I am a little intrigued to see what what that turns out to be. But I think he's probably going to do pretty well, well at all I, the combine. I think, I think every, athletic. Yeah. I think everybody's in those tight just pants. Be, everybody who's in Camp Bellage is just like mm-hmm. waiting for that to happen to just be like. Workout warrior, right? Which are usually not my favorite guys to begin with. Yeah. I, I want a guy who's putting it on the field and showing me, like, I don't give a shit what you're doing in the workouts, right? Man. Right. Like, I know a ton of big for nothing dudes out there who can't stop me. Right. And I'm I'm a pretty small guy. Yeah. You just work out because you can't do anything else well. Right. Like and now it's hard for you to scratch your back when there's a niche. <laughs> right. Um. But it's not. It's it's more than that, man. Like, I don't trust his ability to to break tackles. Um, like in in the Washington game, he literally got tackled by his own dude. It was a, a wide receiver <laughs> you coming. You really to, give him a hard time for this. Well, I don't think ac- it's that big of a deal. He's depot. coming across the formation. It was a bad timing on this sweep, but then like the dude basically just trips him up a little bit, and he does like a full three sixty in the air I getting mean, tackled. When, when you when your dude's coming across like that at, at a at a reasonable speed, and you you're not anticipating getting any contact right there, it looked like he got you know uppercutted by a <laughs> punk ass or something. Like he just went flying through the air, and it was Tiger his own uppercut. dude. Yeah. Um, I I don't think he's I think the I think the the balance is a little bit of an issue. Like I see him getting tripped up a fair amount. I see him stumbling into some tackles. Um, I don't think he fights for extra yards. Like like again, maybe that's an, maybe that's an effort thing. Maybe he just efforts harder than than other times. Um, when you watch him against the Oregon game, it was awesome. Scored a bunch of touchdowns. Was show, showing you some flashes, and then you see other games where he just he doesn't even show up, and and it's. It's just inconsistent, and maybe, maybe I should just look past that because maybe his best days are ahead of him. Sure, um, the the hands are amazing. Right. Well, what, well, before we before we get to that point of of what of hands of of what Balage has to offer from a physical traits standpoint, which is why I think a lot of the truthers are, which is a word truthers. that I really hate, are are all about just waiting for this combine to happen. Right. Um, I think one of my biggest problems is, is that like they had this kind of like thunder and lightning thing over there at, at uh-huh. Arizona State, and like he was lightning. Right. In what world is he lightning? Yeah. He should be thunder and lightning. Right. And then you, you when you watch the tape of Demario Richards or or yeah Demario Richards, I mean he he looks kind of like a Michael Turner kind of guy. So like I get I get it I guess, yeah. but like it seemed when you, it's just like a role reversal, not necessarily, but I you just I just want. Balazs to just be able to pound the rock in the middle of the field, kind of like we were just talking about with Josh Adams. Like if he could do what Josh Adams is doing and then have, I think he's got better physical traits than Josh Adams. So like, I just, that's what bothers me the most about this guy is that I just worry about, you know, I don't know which guy I'm going to get. I feel like there's a lot of Jekyll and Hyde with this guy. And then, but then you bring up the hands and that's what really makes it okay. You kind of, in 2016, you thought it was a precursor of what was about to happen with Balazs. Like, I feel like everybody was just like, oh my God, this guy, you know, had a, had a decent year on the ground, had 126 attempts, 536 yards. Um, but then the wow factor came in that, in that passing game with 44 receptions, 469 yards and a touchdown. Um, and he looks so natural as a pass catcher. Um, Great then, concentration, right? Good catching handsy, balls, very handsy hands. catcher. Um, and then you saw at the Senior Bowl this week, like we kind of talked about, he was running routes against linebackers and stuff like that, and they were they were absolutely no match for him. And you saw that he knows kind of when to make his break, and he he's a bigger guy, and he can get separation, and he is pretty fast. I think he does have good lateral quickness, um, but. I mean, maybe he was just kind of weirdly and poorly used at his time in Arizona State, kind of lending to what you were saying before we got into this discussion. So, you know, I don't, I don't really know. There's just all, what I do know is there's too much finesse to his game. Like, I, I just need a little bit. Which more. I like. I like finesse. Right. So maybe you should cut some weight. But compliment. I want finesse to compliment a guy like this. Yeah. Like I want you to be like, oh, this guy is a huge man and can, and can smash it. But when he needs to, he can create on his own and, and have this finesse kind of yeah spot to his game. And, and I didn't see that much from, I didn't see much finesse from a running standpoint. Almost. I mean, I, I like, think, I think he is more of a finesse. Like that's yeah. what I see out of his running game. I see well, I a see finesse kind of style. I see him break more tackles. It seems after the catch than he does after the run. Um, I think you get him out in space. Maybe he's a little more willing to, to make all that happen. I, I don't know. Um, but when he gets going, and rumbling, it's extraordinary. I mean, he's got long speed. It's strong to quite strong. Yeah. 
No, um, it's it's really good and I mean, he but but right out of the gate, this dude's size it already makes him like a ma- matchup nightmare. Like he was born with matchup nightmare ability. Sure. And 6'3", 222 with some long speed and he could be playing wide receiver. He definitely could be playing wide receiver and and maybe that's a move that he makes. You you've seen a lot of these videos of him really crushing routes and, and running out of the receiver position. And maybe it's kind of a precursor to come to something to come, or maybe it's just something that he wanted to show that he could do. But I feel like in order to unlock his, you know, potential at the next level, he's going to have to figure out that he needs to be a power back when he needs to be a power back to stay on the field for all three downs and, and what people want him to be at the next level. And, and the, uh, the bar that ever that these people who are about him are kind of mm-hmm. setting of saying like, oh, this guy's physical traits, ability, athleticism, and all that. You're not going to get to see all that if 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 and it's, it's not going to ha- like you're not going to be able to dance around on the next level at, at that kind of frame and size. So and and there's just too many times where he goes down with <clears throat> soft arm tackles. Yeah, I mean, and, I feel like sometimes he gets out of control, and which leads to to him taking some big hits. But then he also goes down on a fair amount of soft hits. Yeah, and that that's it's like what? Do, come on, man. Let me give me something more. Give me right. And give I, me something more. I don't want to sit here and just crush Balaj because I don't think I mean, we, we have. We hadn't we... really crushed any of these other guys, and I'm not meaning to. But I just feel the reason that I feel this way about him is because I do think there is so much potential there. Yeah, and it really puts me in a Seemly. tough position because I, you know, I want to really like him, but there's just he just gives me flashes and and long uh minutes on tape where i'm like oh my god what is mm-hmm. this guy doing yeah what are you doing and if you had just watched that part you might not like him at all you got to really and there's not a whole lot to watch on him um another thing pro football focus gave him the highest rated receiving grade out of all yeah power five and, running and he, backs i think he does a decent job of pass blocking i think he's a pretty pretty solid pass blocker sometimes from what you can see on on but he sometimes he doesn't well. even see the blitzer sometimes he's it's just like his running style sometimes he's not engaged and is not efforting out there like i think it's a, it, it might be a legit effort thing which maybe he turns that around and maybe it's motivated because now there's real money and, and and real stuff on the table for him to go get and, and again maybe it was just the way that these guys were using him and as people like to point out, and 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 it's definitely true, maybe his skill set is you know just like I we were talking about like how Josh Allen when you see him on the field he just looks like a pro guy and that his things are going to translate and this guy has the traits to be a professional athlete and maybe his skill set is better used at the next level maybe um, but I don't think so unless you're going to bring some ferocity to your game here on the next level and, and uh, yeah right. I just I think you might get clowned a couple of times and yeah. then get you might you might see hurt. right and you might not see the full potential of what this guy could actually be on the field. His interview is a little Michael Thomas like it's a little he's a little soft spoken. All these guys that we've been talking about today are, are really good interviews. Good interview, yeah. just a little bit soft. Like you hear other people talking in the background, whereas like you know Akram Wadley, he was he was commanding the everyone's attention and he was driving it all and and being himself and. I don't know. I was more some some more acum widely for your pleasure, but uh, <laughs> well, I think to I, to kind of sum all this up, I think this guy has the like outside of like kind of those big four, maybe even I think I like Carry On Johnson ahead of him for the most part. I'm not saying I'm ranking him at six by any means, but I, potential wise, I think he has a just ginormous ceiling. No, I mean we is, definitely got to leave Johnson at five for sure. He's got to stay at five. I'm putting it, I'm leaving him at but, five. But the 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 athleticism and the potential of this guy are absolutely off the charts and through the lines. And I can under, yeah. yeah, And a lot like I can understand why people are enamored with this guy, especially the metric guys. Mm -hmm. He has everything that you want. Um, but I just, I question the, the, the tenacity, uh, you know, of of this guy. So prove me wrong. And I I got no problem taking him. Um, especially because I don't think he's going to be in the first round. I think he'll, with, there's enough negatives. Uh, he might blow the combine up and maybe go in the first round hype or whatever. Be real, the hype, real the here. Just from se- non-senior bowl to senior bowl, I feel like the hype really got rolling. So if he blows yeah. the combine up, he potentially could be in the first round Yeah, just because... First round of rookie drafts. First, yeah, right, right. Right, right. I don't think he's making it in the first round of the NFL draft. But, well, uh, but I mean, 
what what that does speak for is his value if you draft him because I, I don't I don't hate drafting him. I'm not saying that I don't I don't like him at all and that I wouldn't put him on my team. I think he's has the physical attributes, the God given talent, and he's got the receiving ability right. that is awesome as a as a floor and a safety net that, to just kind of feel comfortable exactly. with. It's a pillow to rest your head that's, on. That's why I'm not afraid and to, then the potential yeah. is through the roof and the ceiling is super high. I'm not afraid to draft this guy because of the hands and the route running and all that stuff. I feel like it's a it's a moderately safe pick with a ginormous ceiling. And People are going to love him even if he blows it one year one. Right. Like, you're still going to have value. He's probably going to have this name cachet. Like, Bellage Trois, that's a great name cachet. <laughs> so, I think he, I, I do think, though, that I'm probably not going to end up with him on too many of my teams because it's going to get too hyped up. And it's, I'm, where I feel like I'm ready to go take him, he's already going to have been gone by somebody that well, absolutely loves him. You're going to have to see where the ADP and all that kind of stuff ends up landing. In you know May and June, I'm not a draft like I typically don't like to draft until July at the earliest. I'm an August drafter for anything that you want to do. I want as much time as I can get. I want to see how things play out, injuries, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I some, want to see a few preseason. Some people games, are drafting like, teams right now. Some people can't wait before the NFL draft. Some people right. can't wait until right after the NFL draft. And yep. when I play in some FFPC leagues where it's you know it's in it's in you know you do your rookie drafts in May and stuff like that, which is fine, but. I like as much time as I can get. And again, I don't I don't mind putting this guy on my team. I'm not going to reach for him by any means. But if he falls to me at the top of a second and maybe one of the guys that I loved in front of him, somebody else took, I have no problem putting him on my team out of the out of the hands aspect and, and the route running ability and the potential potential through the roof. All right. Well, that'll put a wrap and a little little nice little bow on uh, Kalen Balaj and today's episode.